Hey, what's up guys? Joker here. Today I'm going to be taking you on a walkthrough for the basics of how to set up OBS or open broadcaster software for YouTube gaming. Now the YouTube gaming service just launched yesterday to directly compete with Twitch as a new game streaming service on YouTube. So I figured I would do a basic walkthrough for just how to get set up on OBS so you guys can start streaming yourselves, hopefully in good high quality streams. So to get started, if you see you have the YouTube gaming dashboard here, if you ever come on here, you can go live uh, from the top right just by clicking there and then clicking go live. Uh, but for me, the easiest way usually is if you just come to the YouTube homepage, you can then click upload on the top right up here. And this is where you would normally upload uh, any new videos that you have, but they now have a live streaming button here on the right. So you just click get started and that will also take you to the live streaming dashboard. So in here you can set a lot of things. You could set your custom thumbnail if you have a thumbnail made for your stream, which I definitely recommend you do so that you stand out from the pack and you can be a little bit unique with each one of your streams so someone knows it's a new stream different from a previous one. You could also set your title in here, here your description, category. So if you were doing like a tech podcast, you could do technology or if you're just doing game streams, you can use gaming. And then you could also set the game that you are playing on your live stream. You also have your chat functionality in here. So if you need to interact with your chat or moderate, set moderators, you can do all of that in here. Unfortunately, they don't have a chat pop out yet like Twitch, but I would like to see that functionality in the future. You can customize the layout of this dashboard the way that you want by clicking this little numpad icon up at the top right, and then you can go ahead and drag this around onto different areas of the screen so you can customize the layout of the dashboard to be any way uh, that you want. You also do have a couple more options in here. You can set DVR mode so people can go back and watch your streams while they're still running live. Uh, you could set it to make the archive of the stream private so it doesn't automatically get uploaded to people's subscription feeds when it's over. You could set your monetization in here or also add in different cards. YouTube added in this card system in the last year so you can add things like links to external websites uh, like your Amazon affiliate code, um, donation pages, uh, you know, merchandise, stuff like that. All your cards you can add in here for whatever you want to plug during your streams you can add your cards in there the last thing in here you're going to really need to be concerned with is your stream key now this is basically what tells obs which channel the live stream is meant to be going here never tell anyone your stream key otherwise people could stream directly to your channel whenever they want so to get started with OBS, you're just going to go ahead and download the open broadcaster software, which you can get from obsproject.com forward slash download, which I'll put a link to down in the description below. It is supported on Windows, OS X for Mac, and Linux. So no matter which platform you're using, OBS is a software you can use. It's completely free and it's open source, which I really love about this particular piece of software. And it's just very useful. I'm actually using it right now to record this video. So definitely a great piece of software and completely free. So really no barrier of entry here for someone if they want to start streaming on YouTube. The only requirement is that you have a PC and an internet connection capable of actually streaming. So once you have OBS downloaded and installed, you can open up the window here. And this is basically what you'll be met with. Your scenes and sources boxes down here will be completely blank. And those are the areas we're going to focus on here initially. So your scene boxes will be blank. And this is basically like your profiles, whereas the sources are what you put into those profiles. So you can see here, I have different ones for Twitch, for TGW, which is my weekly live show. I have one for a four-man show. So depending on what I'm doing, I can have all these different ones. You can see this would be like a four-man uh, setup for a live stream, or we could do my weekly live show right here, which does our two windows here for our webcams, as well as a window for or the browser that we're going through. And then I've got my YouTube gaming one here, which is pretty basic. It's basically just the window. And then I have my webcam up here usually. But to get started, you're just going to come up here and click add scene. And then you can just add, we're just going to call it YouTube. If I can get the actual right key, YouTube gaming test. So I was going to call it YouTube gaming test. So now we have a brand new scene here with the empty sources. So we have nothing added to this profile. So to get started, you're going to want to right click on sources here and then come to add and you're going to be have a bunch of options here like game capture monitor capture window capture video capture device that's your webcam so to get started we're going to click game capture so this would basically add your gameplay into the live stream that people would be seeing so we're just going to add that in there you could change the title if you want but for the purposes of this i'm just going to leave it at default and just click ok through this we could just leave that all at default 
for now. Uh, to add in your webcam, you would just right click and go to add and video capture device. And if you have a webcam connected, then it should be listed up here. I'm using the Logitech C920, so it's listed there. And this, I just leave it default. I don't mess with any of the settings in here, but if you wanted, you could set things like the opacity or you can disable the audio device on the webcam itself. But since I'm using a dedicated microphone, I'm not gonna be able to, not gonna need to use the webcam microphone. And I definitely suggest using a dedicated microphone and not your webcam audio. It's not going to be great. So if you just click OK there, now we have our video capture device added in. Now this sources box works a lot like layers on Photoshop or any video editing software where basically what's on top is what is actually shown on top in the video. So if you have your video capture device or your webcam on top of the gameplay, that means your webcam is going to be displayed over the gameplay that you're showing. So initially it's going to be full screen. So you're going to want to customize this and you could do this by going to edit scene here and you could see what you're actually showing by clicking the preview button. So if you just stop preview, you could preview stream and then you'll see what's actually going to be showing here and then click edit scene and you'll have the ability to customize it. This red outline will show up over that portion of what you're editing. So this would be the webcam here, which would normally be showing, but since I'm recording on a second instance of OBS, it's kind of blank right now, but you could just take my word for it that this would be the webcam. So if you wanted to have your webcam top left, the way that I'm doing right now, you could just grab it and drag it and put it wherever you want. If you want, you can move it to the top right. It'll snap to the corners. You can put it at the bottom right, bottom left, wherever, middle of the screen, you know, wherever you want to put that, you could put your webcam and then it's going to be there and it's going to stay there. And when you're done editing, you can just click edit scene again, and then it'll stay there and you're done. For game capture, this is something you're going to have to change quite frequently because every time you launch a new game, you're going to have to change the property set in here so if i were to launch a game like witcher 3 say i would have to then alt tab out of witcher 3 and then you would come to game capture right click and go to properties and then you would come up here and you would hit this drop down and then witcher 3 would then show up in this menu here as an option for you to select for your game capture now i can't show you that right now but you just have to take my word for it if you do launch a game alt tab come here and it will show up in this window so basically any game you launch gta 5 witcher 3 dota 2 it doesn't matter launch your game alt tab out right click game capture go to properties and then select that game from the drop down it'll say it right here like the witcher 3 and you just click it boom hit ok and then as soon as you open the window back up witcher 3 will be added to your live stream feed right here and people will see that with your webcam overlaid on top of it but that's going to do it for the scenes and sources now let's go ahead and move into some of my custom settings so I've stopped the preview now and we're going to go into settings here and if you guys want you could just pause this and screen grab it and copy and paste whatever I'm using because this is basically the settings I use every time I go streaming it really doesn't change apart from like my broadcast key if I'm doing Twitch or YouTube that's really the only thing in here that I ever change my encoding and video settings always stay the same for general i leave this at default i don't touch this uh, for encoding i use the x264 encoder they do have an nvidia option in here if you're running an nvidia gpu but i really haven't seen any benefit from doing that and since i have a six core intel cpu uh, it's plenty fast enough to keep up with the x264 encoding for the bitrate this is going to be a little bit specific to you but i recommend using 3500 to 4000 if you're doing a 1080p stream i use 4000 because i'm doing 1080p 60 fps which is really ideal that's what a lot of people i think want to watch when they are tuning into a stream they want to see that 1080p 60 fps gameplay especially on the pc so i tend to use 4000 bitrate and i find that to be a good balance for the upload speed as well as for the viewers that are watching at home because if you do have this too high it can create laggy streams and then people might not be able to keep up with it because of youtube servers or their own internet download speed connection so like i said i recommend leaving this at 4000 but that's just me you can mess around with it and find out what's best for you for broadcast settings, I just have this on live stream mode, and since we're doing YouTube gaming, I have this on YouTube, but adversely, if you wanted to do Twitch, you could just hit the drop down here and then go to Twitch and then put in your your stream key from Twitch, which will be different from your YouTube one. Uh, I always go to the primary YouTube ingestion server. I've never had to change this, and this is your stream key, which I mentioned earlier here, which you get on your live streaming dashboard. So if we go back here to the live dashboard, you can see you've got your stream name key, 
down here. Now, you never want to show this to anyone because if you do, then they can just start streaming to your channel willy-nilly anytime they feel like it. So if you just come to the stream key here and highlight it and hit Control C, that'll then copy it. And then you can come over to your broadcast settings on OBS. You can delete that out there and then hit Control V to paste it in. And then it'll have your stream key added in. So then you could stream directly to your channel from OBS. Just make sure you hit apply when you are leaving this window. Otherwise, it is going to remove any settings that you changed while you were in that particular tab. Uh, as far as video settings are concerned, like I said, I use 1920 by 1080 at 60 FPS, even though my monitor is 2560 by 1440. So I do have to adjust the, the scene in order to fit the window since my monitor is technically bigger than 1920 by 1080. But if you're just streaming in 1080, then it's not going to be a problem for you. You just set it there uh, to whatever your monitor's resolution. You could just set it, leave it on monitor if you want, or but like I have to do custom since I said, like I said, I'm streaming in 1080, but I game in 1440. Uh, you could also do a resolution downscale if you wanted to. So if your, your CPU couldn't keep up with the rendering or maybe your internet connection isn't up to snuff to stream in 1080p 60 FPS, then you could downgrade this to 720p. Uh, chances are most people aren't really going to notice anyway. 720p 60 FPS is still going to be good uh, for live streaming games on the internet. Uh, for audio, I just kind of leave this stuff at default. I do mess around with the mic boost depending on what I'm doing. I usually have this on two times. Uh, my mic was a little low yesterday for our live stream, so I had it up at three times but usually two times I find to be best but mess around with your mic settings it's really going to depend on your audio device and how that sounds you may even have to adjust the desktop boost a little bit if maybe your games or your background is too quiet if you want that to be a little bit more pronounced in there and you could change your custom your audio device for what you're listening through like speakers or headphones I use my DAC which is what my headphones run to and then my microphone is the Scarlett Solo interface which is what this Audio Technica mic is running to but you guys can basically just copy and paste what I have in here and mess around with your settings and see what works best for you and don't forget to hit that apply button when you are done changing your settings I don't mess around with anything else down here as far as hotkeys or advanced is concerned you can pretty much leave that all at default uh, it's really just the things that I mentioned here and that's really it that base that's basically the end of it I mean once you're done doing all of that there and you have all of your settings saved and you've got your scenes and your sources added in you just go ahead and hit start streaming and then you're off and running and you you'll see your stream pop up here it'll say this stream is online if you've done everything correctly so if you missed anything go back watch the video through again pause you know take your time with it it's pretty easy to do once you get it set up and you get familiar with the OBS software it really is quite simple. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here now, guys. I want to thank you for watching. And if this video helped you out at all or taught you something new, show me by sticking a big thumbs up on it below. It helps out the channel a lot. And subscribe if you're not already. And I'll catch you guys next time. Tara.